Okay, uh, good morning and uh, welcome once again, guys. Thank you all for joining and thank you for uh, waiting and being patient. Um, sorry about the late start. We had a technical issue. Um, well, so welcome for the youth ministry course. Um, I, I hope you had a good time learning about the children ministry uh, with Pastor Serena. And so we are now transitioning into uh, youth ministry. Uh, this is going to be one of the most uh, a short courses uh, subjects that you will cover in this uh, uh, in this degree okay so uh, we will finish the most part of the content um, pretty fast and so it's short so everybody said amen, amen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right cool so uh, Let's get started, right? Uh, youth ministry, and I want to start off by just addressing the first question from the first chapter. Uh, why is youth ministry important? Um, why is youth ministry important? And uh, who are the youth? And so uh, if you can, if you don't mind, um, start sharing. Uh, who, according to you, or how would you define uh, youth? Who are the youth, according to you guys? You can feel free to unmute and speak. Yes. Oh, so um, the the youth um, could be. Um, let me see. Depending on where you are, sometimes they're referred to as young adults, and then sometimes they refer to youth. Mostly from the ages of seventeen, all the way right. to thirty-three. Thirty-three. Right. They're about thirty. Thirty-three. So that's kind of the age bracket of uh, the group we call youths. Okay. Um, most of them are usually in the high institution, universities, colleges, and young professionals. Right. Um, mostly, uh, when we talk about youths or young adults in a church ministry, uh, we're basically looking at uh, students who are or young adult, young professionals, like I said, who are singles. Right and uh are maturing into adulthood um right. so it's kind of like an upgrade of their teenage years a teenager their, their teenage years now they're coming into they're in between they're about to just enter into the adulthood but a phase of their life where they have to discover themselves fully right. uh, find out purpose find themselves basically in god and in life that, right. so that's basically um young adults or youths basically right. awesome yeah thank you say thank you You're welcome. thank you yeah all right uh can be any age between 10 to 30. okay all right okay uh, anything else anyone else uh, who are the youth No, so we are starting this whole thing, uh, asking this question, not for the sake of asking this question, because uh, in every area of ministry, whichever ministry that you are leading, uh, one of the key things will, uh, will be to identify your audience. Uh, and um, so we'll talk about that in a later chapter, but then I'm just getting you all to start thinking about uh, for us to know our audience, right? Um, okay, they are the future pillars, okay. Anybody else? Asha. There is okay, eighteen to thirty five. All right. Okay. In here in India, after twenty five, youth getting married. So they become adult. Okay. But who are the youth? I didn't ask when are they getting married. <laughs> Okay, future leaders, all right. Yes, Christopher. Yeah, Christopher, I see you've raised your hand. Go ahead, please. Okay, this is most enthusiastic and energetic section of society. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Problem with the mic, okay. 
All right, guys. Yeah, but thank you for uh, answering this question. Um, right. So, if you look at the notes, there are some definitions that uh, I took from different parts. Um, you know, of, of those who understand you very differently. So, if you look, it says the United Nations, uh, for statistical purposes, define youth as those uh, persons uh, between the ages of fifteen and twenty-four. Uh, with a prejudice to other definitions by member states. This is the United Nations, okay? Uh, the United Nations General Assembly defines um, youth as, you know, as Taisha said, somewhere between 15 and 24. Uh, the World Bank uses this term between 15 and 25. Commonwealth Youth Program refers to young people as, uh, again, between 15 and 29. Uh, most of the bishops, uh, you know, uh, conferences refer to youth as youngsters uh, between 18 or oh, of 30 or 35, somewhere in that bracket, right? Um, but I think, uh, I like what Avni also has mentioned, most enthusiastic and energetic uh, section of the society. Uh, so I think beyond um, beyond the age it itself, when you, uh, for me, especially when you say youth, uh, I, I think of them as vibrant, energetic, uh, you know, they're into sports and media technology, uh, like all this, full of life uh, for me i would define youth as like uh, energy and that's i think there's a reason why we say age is just a number no uh, isn't it uh, age is just a number so it's, it's someone who you know you if you look at an individual and see who's so full of life and so full of energy and uh, and enthusiasm uh, you say like hey wow that you know even if that person is a little elderly you say okay that uh, you know, he's, he acts like a young person, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, so, and I think it's 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 safe enough to say that uh, youth is not just an age, or for us to look at it as not just an age, but a state of mind and an attitude. Okay, a state of mind as an and an attitude, right? Um, but so the world of the youth today, and this is how the society has uh, labeled the youth as well: um, multitasking. Uh, they want 36 hours a day. Now, all of these are from research that's done by people. Uh, they define the young youth as, you know, multitasking. They want 36 hour a day or they, they do things that is that seems as long as uh, for 36 hours a day. Uh, I don't know how they manage that, but then, yeah, five minute attention span. <laughs> um, right. And there are so much, uh, so many expressions that describe the youth of today. Uh, but yeah, having said all of that, when we uh, there's a report by Dr. G. C. Manna, uh, who's the who was the director of uh, the Central Statistic Office of Indian government, right? Doctor, he was the director of general, director general, and this is what he had to say regarding the youth. A report of 2017, uh, right? And another one has not come out yet, uh, but I'll look out for that. But then uh, this is what he had to say. Um, youth is the most valuable segment of the population. A human resource potential of individuals uh, not only gain maximum, but also reaches its peak during period. And that's a very important line, guys. I just don't want to read this quote of what he's saying. But then there's so much uh, depth and profoundness to what he's saying, saying human resource potential of individuals not only gain maximum, but also reaches its peak during this period. Uh, youth in reality represent the present of a country. Right? Uh, young ones, when nourished properly, can grow like a huge redwood tree, but if not controlled or neglected, can erupt like a volcano. Uh, no country can afford to ignore its youth. Okay, if you want to highlight that, you can highlight it. It says, no country can afford to ignore its youth. And India is a youth nation in the sense that share of its youth in the population in 2011 stands to 34.8. Now, this is 2011. And at 2011, it was 34.8. Today, it's doubled that number. Uh, if you look at the report uh, for 2021, actually, it's doubled. It's almost 75%. Um, just so we know, um, I'm talking on behalf of in India, because I'm an Indian. Uh, it, India is the youngest country uh, in the world. 
it's, it's the youngest country in the world. That means just to say the population of the youth uh, um, is more than any other country in the world. Right. So the youth of the nation are the trustees of prosperity. Uh, youth is a huge reservoir of energy which need to be tapped and harnessed intelligently for the development of the society. Uh, the changing demographic profile of the world has thrown a window of opportunity favoring India. Presently, India has the largest share of pop youth population in the world and will continue to hold so for the next 20 years. Um, I mean, that's, that's quite fascinating, um, uh, exciting, scary, uh, everything at, at once, right? Uh, and so it, it's the most beautiful face, uh, you know, of time. So, um, I mean, most of us are, uh, are, are going through that stage of just gone through. But if I were to ask you uh, one single memory of your youthful days, what would that be? The most memorable one. Yeah, say so go ahead. Uh, my most memorable days as a youth, um, according to our definition of who youth was, was a time when I was playing a volleyball uh, in the uh, where I was living, basically just with our neighbors over the fence. It was just a very memorable um, event that I still hold in my mind till today. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Anybody else, guys? I just want to share, like, just dig a little deeper. <laughs> well, some of us don't have to dig deeper. Night outs. Is Pratik, you can't do night outs today? No? <laughs> what is stopping you from having night outs now? I was a troublemate during sports. Okay. Yeah, the truths are all coming out now. Come on, come on. <laughs> Bachelor party. <laughs> That's the party. Okay. Hey guys, come on. Speak up. Uh, at this stage of my life, I feel breaking the rules is so much fun because if parents have told you not to do it and right. you just do it with the fear of being caught and yet not being caught, <laughs> see, it gives you so much of a sense of victory. Like <laughs> you're caught yes. and you are in trouble. But yes, when parents draw a line and you are right. always keen to, you know, break that uh, right. line yeah. and go and do things and explore and just find out your own way. Yeah. Though we did yeah. not have much of opportunities then being in a small yeah. city, we right. were often being taught we didn't have much of, you know, uh, liberty. But right. still, we tried every, everything that we could do in our own capacity to, right. you know, enjoy it. And, you know, we could just get out of it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite thrilling, isn't it? Uh, yes. every, everything about those days can be very thrilling. Yeah. Taisha, go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> Good, uh, good morning, Pastor, and everyone. Okay, I think a sense of freedom when you remember, mm. you know, no responsibility, no kids, and all of that. Right. So you tend to want to do what you want to do, your own, right. just right. like you, you, the, uh, endless right. opportunity. Yeah. While yeah. it's different with responsibilities, you know, right. you have a real check when you're older, but you just yeah. seem like you have a freedom. Um, yeah. to do all that you can do and endless possibilities when you're yeah. younger. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, to absolutely. Yeah. Learning new skills despite the risks. Yeah. I mean, that's that that's that's where I'm getting at, isn't it? Um, yeah. Right. So it's it's a stage of life where your you're just your, so many of your habits are still being formed and you're learning so many things because uh uh <laughs> And like Asha here, who's not uh, done with her youth days yet, but uh, playing soccer was the best memory of my youth, being mischief and just having fun. You still play soccer, right, Asha? Soccer, it seems. Football. Okay, so <laughs> it's football, football. Okay, India. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, she's sitting right here. So, <laughs> but I, I mean, there's something about it. Uh, it can bring a lot of memories back. All right. It can be good, bad, but and whatnot. Um, as in, uh, but it's a it's a stage, uh, an age in life where a lot of things are being formed. Uh, you're learning so many things, and you feel like. Uh, you're on top of the world, you're full of life, full of energy. Uh, you're always right can be one of the things, uh, isn't it? And uh, and I absolutely agree with the director when he says, you know, if, if we are not, if the youth is not contained or controlled or, you know, guided or stewarded well, um, they can just erupt like a volcano. Um, and um, and or if they are guided well, if they are stewarded well, they can grow like these huge redwood trees, uh, redwood trees, uh, redwood forests in California. You know, just huge, huge, uh, gigantic trees, um, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of good memories comes back uh, to each and every one of us night outs, hanging out, uh, just you know, deciding to take off whenever you feel like taking off. Uh, you know, on bike rides or whatever. Now I have to ask permission from my wife and whatnot, but which is a good thing. It's okay. But yeah, get what I'm saying. Okay. So whether that's the beauty of uh, youth, and you know, we've seen why it's important to focus on the youth, because uh, especially from the context of India. Uh, once again, I apologize for you know just talking from the context of India based on this report. Uh, as he said, uh, presently India has the largest share of youth population in the world. And will continue to hold so for the next 20 years. Uh, I mean, that should excite the Church of India and, and the Church of the world as well, all over, uh, is to just find pockets, find ways to uh, equip our young people, to, to get hold of them and to see how we can get hold of them. Uh, right? So that's um, why focus on the youth. Uh, and but let me let me ask you another question, uh, and now we'll bring it down to the church uh, focus. Uh, why we need youth ministry? Why do we need youth ministry? Do you think we need youth ministry? Yes, sir. So with my personal experience since I've joined APC and I've, you know, experienced that uh, personally that, you know, uh, being, a, you know, uh, at this age, I mean, I see them work, how, uh, how to energy, how to channelize them is a skill. And uh, I think APC is buzzing with that. APC all over, you see that there is so much of youth and they are uh, so much engaged in serving the Lord. And that itself is a best way to keep them out from all the other things that can, you know, be mi misusing their energy. So uh, their enthusiasm, their love for Lord, their service it itself helps them to keep themselves focused and uh, be more fruitful in their way mm -hmm. and walk and uh, you know be do the best what they can do for the kingdom of god and that is what uh, uh, i i'm learning from them personally right. i'm learning from them i'm i'm really being encouraged looking at them the way they work the energy they yeah. put in yeah sometimes it's toll taking on us because uh, mm -hmm. we we are uh, on a different level of physical energy different level of mental energy yes. but yes. Uh, you know they have this yeah. uh, what you said 36 hours yes Seeing them going, <laughs> so much yes. energy. They're, yeah. they're working. So uh, I am personally very encouraged, and I see that uh, happening in my church, which I'm learning. I'm being right. uh, equipped to understand how to channelize them, how we can use them, and yeah. also raising up a daughter who's 21 years old. Uh, right. I find it better way to right. deal with her. Uh, so I, I feel this is so important and this is so beautiful to see these young ones standing for the Lord and yeah. proclaiming the word of God and doing all that they can do through yeah. their lives. Absolutely. Knowing the Lord in a young age is the best blessing. <laughs> yeah. We came late, yes. so we lost yeah. that time. But anyways, that's not something uh, difficult yeah. for the Lord, but yes. We yeah. feel sometimes a little envious that why didn't we know the Lord in such a young age? <laughs> yeah. But it's beautiful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abhi. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, why do we need youth ministry in churches? 
Why is it important? Come on, guys. Talk to me. One small example, past if you would allow, I'll give. It's sure, like yeah. having, it's like fire. You know, you can mm. use the fire to cook, to do yeah. so many good things, and it's like fire which can burn away the entire uh, forest. Yeah. You know, you yeah, know, yeah. Bring so much of devastation. So, uh, you know, it's when we say youth ministry is important, it's like we have the fire, but how we use it for yeah. uh, better things, yeah. for good things. That's all. That's true. Yeah. Thanks, Avni. Thank you. What else, guys? Come on, talk to me. Why do we need youth ministry in our churches? Why is it important? What will happen if we don't have youth ministry in our churches? Yes, Rupa, go ahead. Go ahead, Rupa. So you've raised your hand. Sir, sorry. Okay. Uh, now, generation, you said, youth. So this is the time to reach out to them. And not only that, they are going through a lot of problems in their in this generation. Mm -hmm. We are uh, creating a place where they can then where they can open, right. open, and we can uh, just sow into their lives, right. share with their problems, and yeah. uh, so many people, uh, children, young people. When I minister to, to them, they cannot uh, share it with their parents. They go through a lot of uh, depression. Even while ministering in the church, they have other side of their lives. Mm -hmm. where they're going through a lot of tensions and peer pressure and so many things uh, so we can help them there and connect them with the lord to strengthen them and nurture them there yeah thank you sir thank you Rupa. thank you yeah um make, all right Let's see some i do make them understand the trap of the enemy against them yeah second generation leadership yeah 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 but thank you for sharing uh okay let's see says to reach out to them in their level in their way of understanding their exp their experiences um, they are the future leaders and also when we reach out to them we can stir their passion towards the right thing yeah, absolutely um, we youth may stray slowly from following um, the truths and slide away slowly due to the pleasures of the world and also the entertainment of this world one reason is that we can get back on track of following Christ and and also help us realize that we should not despise our young age. Let no one despise your youth and be an example to believers in word and conduct and love and faith. Yeah, thanks, Asha. Thank you, Asha. Yeah, I, you know, I just want to simply say this. Why is it important? Because um, I, I think I've said this many times uh, with you all in the previous classes. Is I was born into a Christian family, but just because I was born into a Christian family, I was not a Christian all, all you know, uh but it was i gave my life in a youth camp uh you know and and i i heard the god's calls for ministry in a youth camp in november of 2004 um and so if a church did not think that a youth ministry is necessary i would not have gone for the youth camp and if a church did not have a youth camp youth ministry or a youth camp i would not have gone sure i, I might have encountered the lord somewhere differently uh, you know, in his grace and in his mercy. But then for me to say that I he encountered me, I met the Lord uh, in a youth camp is something so very special to me and, and dear to my heart, right? Uh, and um, and yeah, um, why we need youth ministry? And I mean, just look at from the Bible perspective, uh, from say the Hebrews, the Jews, uh, from the time the, you know, from as a as a children from the age of four to five they send them to uh, a synagogue um in their like what we call it as lkg ukg uh, they have beth uh, safer but uh, it simply means they go to the synagogue and their rabbi starts to teach them at that young age and by the age uh, of eight or ten 
they would have memorized the entire Torah, that's the Old Testament, um, uh, by the time that they were eight or ten guys. They will know the whole Old Testament by heart. Okay, uh, so get them young is um, is not just a saying because everybody knew knows. Okay, it's so easy to form their thinking the way their ways. Uh, you know, and when you look at some of these um, terrorist groups, right, that uh, we've seen over the news, we see how they brainwash young children, uh, and you know how they are taught to hate a certain race of people, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Why do they do that? Because they know it's very easy to shape their thinking, to brainwash them, to uh, you know, to do whatever you want to do with them if you get them young. Uh, and just think about it of our young people and the ways that we can shape their heart, their minds by just discipling them, releasing the word of God into their lives. And I think youth ministry uh, is important to say the least, right? For to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. And um, in a bunch of scriptures, it says in Ecclesiastes 12, one, remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the days, uh, evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say I have no pleasure in them uh, I remember that verse because uh, my grandmother used to say that to me all the time quote that verse all the time all the time and she would do that in Tamil uh, but yeah um, and there's other bunch of uh, reasons that I've shared in this chapter as to uh, why and I asked some of our young people some of our youth leaders as to why they think we need youth ministry um, and it's all mentioned uh, in the notes in this chapter. So I would encourage you to go through it and it's just some answers. But I, I want to leave this session with one verse that encouraged me uh, that kind of, uh, you know, in my early days of leading youth ministry in general was from Numbers chapter 14, verse 31. Uh, Numbers 14, 31. Um, okay, should I say that again? Numbers chapter 14, verse 31. Um, it says, as for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. Right? As your children, uh, sorry, as for your children that you said would be taken as plunder. Now, uh, you know, I want, as a society, uh, we have labeled uh, this generation of young people in so many things as millennials, as Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, so many things that they are, uh, that they, that they work for 36 hours and short, you know, short attention span. Uh, they're always on their phones and this and that. We've labeled them with so many labels, uh, young people of this day and age. Uh, but what stood out was okay. This young people that we've that, that we've given them so many labels. It's like God is saying, okay, hey, all your children that you have that you are calling them so and so in your society, they have a destiny, they have a promise, and I'm going to bring them in. And uh, and it's very exciting to me, and I want to be in line with how God sees at them and say, use me as that vessel to bring them into the destiny that you have prepared for them. Uh, right, it's uh, that's beautiful, isn't it? So, okay, um, right. So I will stop uh, with that this session, and we'll meet again on Wednesday and continue from there on. Okay. Uh, well, thank you all for joining in, uh, and I've shared uh, your final assignment uh, in the stream as well. This is for those online. Um, so, yeah, any questions? Feel free to ask. It's fairly simple. Okay, thank you all for joining again. Good to see you all, all the familiar faces after a while. Uh, you guys take care and see you all around. Okay, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We sir. love you. We love you, Pastor. Yeah, love you too, Charles. <laughs>